Hi, New Life. Today I would like to talk to you about making the most of every opportunity. We're going to be coming from the book of Acts chapter 7. In Acts chapter 7, Stephen takes center stage. Stephen gives the longest speech in Acts. Stephen summarized Israel's history. He talks about a nation that refuses to accept Jesus as the Messiah. Stephen summarizes verses 1 through 53. Stephen gives the Sanhedrin the history that they should have already known, for they were scholars. They were religious people who knew these things, who had studied Moses' laws. They knew also that one day the Messiah was supposed to come, and he was coming to save the world. And this Messiah that they talked about was to come was the very Messiah that Stephen was already talking about. I want to pick this up in chapter 7, verse 54. <clears throat> Stephen had already given his speech, like I just talked about, about the history of the Israelites, about this nation, and yet the Sanhedrin were still not understanding that Jesus had already ascended into heaven. And Stephen wanted them to know that this Jesus, who they claimed had not come, had already sent down the Holy Spirit that dwelled in him. And because the Holy Spirit dwelled in him, it empowered him to do what he had to do in these last few verses that, we're gonna, that I'm going to share with you this morning. Let's read. In Acts chapter 7, verse 54, we the members of the Sanhedrin heard this. They were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep and Saul approved of their killing him. There are three things that I want to share with you out of these last few verses. Stephen made the most of his opportunity. The first thing we see is Stephen being bold. There was a boldness inside of Stephen. There was a desire to tell the truth about the Lord Jesus Christ, even if it meant that these people were not going to receive it. I don't know if that day he realized when he was given the speech when he was talking about the history of all of these men, of talking about the history of Moses and Abraham and Joseph to these men who should have known what he was talking about, I don't know if he understood that this would be the last speech that he would ever give. I don't think he cared. I think there was a fire inside of him that says, I am going to share truth with these people, even if it costs me my life. He was bold. He shared the truth. He shared the gospel. Unashamed, not afraid of what was to become of him. Second thing I see here, we have to understand that some people that we encounter are not going to believe the truth that we have to offer. There are some people that we encounter are just not going to receive the truth that we have to, have to offer. Look at verse 57. At this they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him. They didn't want to hear. We have family members like this. We have friends like this. Every time we bring up Jesus Christ, they close, up, close us off or they close us down. They don't want to hear that truth. They want to have the privilege and the right to just engage in any old kind of lifestyle with having any accountability. These men right here, they didn't want to hear about Jesus Christ because they didn't believe that Jesus Christ had come yet. 
All they wanted to do was to destroy this man. They wanted his head on the platter. And they, by the end of the day, would have it. Stephen was not afraid to share with those even if they didn't want to hear it. His job and Christ's command to us was to go into all nations and share the good news. And that's exactly what Stephen was doing. Finally, we see that Stephen feared God more than he feared man. Look with me in verses 57 through 60 here. At this they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, they rushed at him, dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. Now hear this. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed. Doesn't sound like to me that there's any fear in this man. It doesn't sound like to me that he's going to back down, that he's going to hush up. Even in the midst of Stephen being destroyed, his life getting ready to be taken, him getting ready to be stoned to death, he is still praying for the lost. He is still mindful that there are a group of people who need to hear the truth, even if it costs him his life. What a powerful testimony that even in the midst of being yelled at, <laughs> of getting ready to lose his life, of people who would not believe, he was still praying, he was still hoping, he was still believing that if he kept speaking, that maybe, just maybe, the ears of those who were listening might receive the truth. It goes on to say that then he fell to his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep and saw approved of them killing him. Stephen sacrificed his life because he had a love for the Lord Jesus and he had compassion for those who were lost. He had one opportunity did he know he only had one opportunity? I don't know. But what I do know is that he made the most of that opportunity. He shared Christ even to his last breath until God took his spirit and called him home. What a great testimony that is for us today. I pray that we would get to that place one day in our lives to where we don't fear man. We don't fear about being left out of something. We don't fear what people are going to say about us. All we want to do is bring honor and glory to God's name. If we ever get there, I believe that our society will be changed because they will see something different in us. They will see the love of Christ, the power of Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit, and that there is no fear in sharing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for the hearts and the minds who hear this. I pray that they would receive power and boldness, that they would not be afraid or ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that they would not back down or hush up, that they would speak truth in the lives of those who they encounter, that we would not be fearful of what man says, but that we would honor what God told us to do. And he told us to go and make disciples. And we can't do that without sharing the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. Thank you for the love of your word. Thank you for the example that Stephen set for us. And I pray that we would take it to heart today that we're meant to be bold people, to be unafraid and be unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We love you. We give you praise. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning and I pray and hope that something was said or something was heard that would challenge you to examine your walk with Christ. May God bless.